Hello there, are you trying to make inroads into your firm in project management? If you are, I just wanted to alert you to the fact that you can start off really small and you can grow your efforts into larger size endeavors. I was a project manager in a firm and I saw an opportunity to expand in their project management, but not in their project management as in bare bones project management. They were already quite good at what they did, but I realized that they wanted to get their project managers certified and they didn't know where to start. So I recommended project management training and I got over 50 of my colleagues certified in a well-known firm. Now for you, it may be starting off on a smaller scale. I would advise starting off with a little lunch and learn. How about a simple lunch and learn webinar or a simple lunch and learn in person if you can get people together and just begin to alert them to the structure of project management, that project management is indeed structured. You might want to, of course, let them know project management is structured and there's actually a standard. There's a standard that project management is based on in the world of the PMI. You could introduce them to the PMBOK guide, or you can just start off with a blank template as the five process groups. Now you may be wondering, how do I do this? How do I get the material? You've got it right behind me. So this one pager is to help you. It's to help you make inroads into your firm and begin to alert people to the importance of project management by handing them one of these. They are very cost effective. Each one of them, you could get them from our website. Just click the link below. 10, 20, 30, however many people you need this for, you can get this for them. If you don't want to deal with the paper, you can just register and get one of these for them on our website. This is what I would recommend you start with something simple. It's a one pager, it's a roadmap that shows people project management and the trajectory of it. Okay. So in a few minutes, you would have successfully taken people through initiating, planning, executing, monitoring, and controlling, and closing, and what exactly they need to do to get started, being more calculated in their project management, rather than being all over the place. You know, project management could be done ad hoc, and when it is done ad hoc, to be honest, it is never a great outcome. Some people get by by being able to crawl through the project, but my recommendation is to make project management structured, deliberate, intentional. So in the next few minutes, I'm gonna walk you through the trajectory. You've seen it on the channel before, I know. I have explained project management in five minutes, in seven minutes, in different flavors, but now I'm gonna explain the full map to you. There are parts of the map I was not able to go into the last time I talked about project management with you. So let's explore the full map of project management this time. So project management can be broken down into process groups. I talked about this last time. There are five process groups of project management. There's initiating, there's planning, there's executing, there's monitoring and controlling, and there's closing. What you want your team to understand is planning does not have to be done in a rigid fashion. It could be done in an iterative fashion. It could be done as you go through the project in stages. You could make your project management whatever you need to on a scale from zero to 100, low level, high level, low power, high power, it really depends on your firm. In some firms, projects could be run with a medium type of acceleration. And when I talk about acceleration, I'm talking about firepower, urgency, visibility of project management. You know, other organizations, it has to be more hard hitting. You need more resources committed to it. You need more tools, more software, because there are more hands touching the project, and they need a better understanding of what each person is doing, of what each facet is doing. So let your team know that project management can be scaled. 
you don't have to use the whole kit and caboodle every single project you could scale it up or down you could use excel you could use smartsheets you could use primavera you could use microsoft project you could use a sheet of paper you could use post it notes you could be extreme to the side of agile you could be extreme to the side of predictive depending on your project i don't like looking at project management as predictive agile there's a blend your blend could be towards the spectrum of predictive or towards the spectrum of agile, but there should be a blend. There are many good things to take and use. And being agile means cutting out the crud that isn't working. A few days ago, a well-known leader in this space of agile talked about how certain meetings in the space of agile or scrum, if you will, could be shaven down and some people were having a fit but those who got it said no big deal we're meant to be agile why do stuff that we don't need so if we need to shave off some ceremonies let's do that in the same token if you need to beef up some ceremonies do that so project management is not black or white it's not predictive or agile it's a blend and these days, it is important that project managers make it a blend. So as you're training this stuff to your team, we don't want to go off on the deep end of goofy and loopy land saying, you must have this, you must have that. No, you got to scale your project management, okay? It's totally scalable. It's totally adaptable. It depends on you. There's no hard and fast rule, even in the guide. No one says it has to be that way or no way, okay? So keep that in mind. So moving along to the summaries here, what you need to let your team know in initiating when you're training them with this material, just let them know project should be authorized. Project should be authorized for the good of the firm. We don't want projects that are useless. We don't want projects that shouldn't have been. So there should be some gating process to go from a concept to really vetting it and seeing if it will work and then authorizing it and then moving into planning you want your team to know planning again is malleable it doesn't have to fit one strict pattern and nothing else executing you got to let them know it's all about the leadership piece about the people piece the people on the project are the ones doing the work the people who are waiting are the customer the end user. People make projects what they are. Without humans, I can guarantee you, there would be no projects. No humans, no projects. We have projects to satisfy real needs. So never, ever forget that the customer and the stakeholders are why we have the project. They're the reasons why we do what we do primarily. It's not about the work. It's not about the journey, it's about the people. And then we can think about the deliverable and the journey and so on. Monitoring and controlling when you train this to your team, let them know that this has to be tailored to the need. We don't just wanna throw documents and plans at a project if we're not gonna use them. Monitoring and controlling, we gotta use what we create. If we're not using it, it's useless and we shouldn't be doing it. So if you created a schedule, use it. If you created a, a WBS, use it. If you created a requirements traceability matrix, use it in monitoring and controlling to ensure that you're doing what you should. Closing, big thing here is collating and collecting all of that valuable lessons learned base that you've gathered from different processes. This is where it gets together. This is where you put all of this into a final repository this is where you look back on the project in the rear view mirror to understand, did we succeed, did we fail, why did we, okay? So this is a very, very simple one pager. It's so simplistic. But you can totally benefit from this, all right? If you want hard copies for your team that are laminated and in color, just order them from our site. We'll get these shipped out to you and you'll be able to start using this fantastic document to train your team, to coach your team, to mentor them in project management. Now, the next pages of this document go into more detail. 
And that is part of the detail I would like to go into with you. Now, you want to first of all break down project management into groups, but you also want to let them know there are knowledge areas, integration, scope, schedule, cost, quality, resources, communications, risk, procurement, and stakeholder management. So as you train your organization in project management, you want to let them know that these exist. And then you want to take them on the next part of the journey, showing them how everything interweaves. All right. So for those of you that said, fail, I, I, I want to train. I, I want to help my company. Well, this is a perfect place to start. Get this and you've got four pages in addition that you can use to equip your team with knowledge. Just expand their minds and let them know the possibilities, all right? So this curriculum that I've put together will help you do that. So initiate the project. You want to authorize with a project charter. Then you want to identify your stakeholders. Stakeholder analysis should be done. You want to look at the different perspectives that you can analyze your stakeholders from, level of power, level of interest, level of interest, legitimacy, the appropriateness of the involvement, things such as that. And you also want to stress that a stakeholder register can begin to be a thing in your firm because it helps you better identify stakeholders and their requirements. The second process group is planning. You want to plan everything that needs to be planned, right? So starting off with scope, scope should be planned. You wanna plan out your scope, you wanna have a scope management plan, a requirements management plan, you could also have that, but have a plan for how you're going to firmly define scope. A lot of organizations have trouble firmly defining scope. You wanna firmly define it to avoid problems down the road. I use the telescope as an analogy. Going into schedule management, you want to develop a schedule, whatever software you're using, Excel, Primavera, Plan View, whatever it is, develop your schedule. Cost management has to be planned as well, so determine your budget. Ultimately, you want your budget to be the time-phased budget. So stress that. When you're training them about quality, you want to stress the words fitness for use conformance to requirements, customer satisfaction. You want to let them know the essence of quality. Prevention is better than kill. If you don't have processes and procedures for quality in your firm, you want to begin to encourage that. Resource management, encourage them about planning resources intentionally, how to acquire them, estimating them in the first place, and ultimately equipping the team. If team building and development has been poor in your organization, then this is an opportunity to begin to encourage them to step up their game in this regard of resource management. Communications management, in this regard, you want people to be aware of the 553087, the importance of communication that exceeds the words, that outweighs the words. The tone of voice and body language are big. And hey, if you need to partner with me for better, bigger representations than what you feel you can offer, please get in touch. Because this is what I do as a profession, you see. This is what I do. I've been doing this for many, many years now. So, you know, talking about curricula to help your team members. If you need curricula from the world of leadership, you see I've got material. This is a book called A No Good Leader. This is a book called Project Failure, Seven Symptoms and Several Remedies. This is another curriculum I have put together. It's audio. It's 20 hours of audio training project management. Here's another piece of curricula that I've trained people on personally. So it's called Getting Rich in Project Management. So for those of you who are going for interviews, you're getting employments in organizations, you feel you've reached a brick wall, you need help, you need to be calling me. You need to be asking me to help you, all right? So pmsucceed.com is the website where you can sign up to get one-on-one -on -one mentoring, one-on-one -on -one coaching. So I know outside of, of your organization, you may have project management needs 
you want to grow, you want to excel, you want to expand, you've hit a brick wall in your job, I can help you. So you can see all this content that I'm showing you that I've developed over the years. These are things that can help people and even your colleagues, you know, your family members. Some of you have got young budding leaders. This would be a great book. The No Good Leader would be a great book to help your family members, young and upcoming uh, project managers or folks who are just uh, getting through with school. Plus uh, a book called Project Management Essentials. We have many different templates here. So my point is do not struggle. Do not struggle alone. I'm here to help you. If you want your organization to grow, to expand, you need to get me involved so that I can help you, okay? I can help you. You cannot do it all alone. You shouldn't do it all alone when there's help, when there's someone who enjoys helping. I enjoy helping people. See, tomorrow I'm flying out to help another company in a place called Asheville. Some of you don't know where that is, but I'm flying out to help some colleagues get some better perspectives of planning, to plan projects, to create some work breakdown structures, uh, to work with some schedules and some network diagrams, a whole kit and caboodle. So if you are trying to move your company forward, or you know your company needs to be moved forward, or your business unit needs to be moved forward, please involve me, okay? Going back to what we're looking at here, um, I jumped into that because communications is a very, very specialized area, you see. And um, if you're looking for help in that regard, there are many, many different uh, curricula I could advise and train your team on. Like, everyone communicates, few connect, which is a John Maxwell curriculum. So that is just one of the possibilities, you know, or the, the real curriculum relationships, equipping, attitude, and leadership. If you need to move your firm forward, please contact me, okay? So that's communications. You need to let them know the 553087, risk planning. We could do this from now till tomorrow. Seriously, risk on its own probably deserves its own workshop. But when you're training them, again, let them know it's malleable, it's flexible. It doesn't have to be exactly as it is here. But you want to let them know risks should be identified, analyzed, planned for, and then monitored. Procurement planning, many companies have great business units that do this, but you want to let them know, hey, think about being a little bit innovative in your contracting, in the contract types that you put into effect. Stakeholder planning, we talked about this a few minutes ago. It's important to have a stakeholder register and from there build on a stakeholder engagement plan. And that takes us into executing, doing the work, monitoring and controlling, checking and correcting the work, and closing, which is collating all of those lessons learned, bringing them from wherever they are, and putting them into a final lessons learned repository for the firm and handing over the project. So let's talk about these three in more detail. Executing. Executing is all about getting work done. So the first process we look at here is just that. It's called direct and manage project work. When you're training your team, just let them know leadership is at the heart of this. So being able to lead, being able to coordinate, being able to rally folks together and move them through the project, that's what this is all about. Manage project knowledge, this is the process for creating, sharing, and using knowledge, a very important one. Manage quality, this is really code for quality assurance. Acquire resources, acquiring the resources you need for the project. Develop team, building your team. Manage team, leading and guiding the team and giving them feedback. Manage communications, all about managing communications on the project by distributing the information people need. Implement risk responses, being the superhero to implement what was planned, making sure it's done. Conduct procurements is all about awarding contracts, taking a look at the responses that you've received to the RFPs and so on, and moving ahead with one. And when I say RFPs, I'm talking about all manner of documents, RFPs, RFIs, IFNs. There are many ways you can get the vendors to respond. And then manage stakeholder engagement, managing 
the stakeholders engagement by engaging them on the project. All right, so moving ahead here, that's executing. And those are just things you need to remind them about. Monitoring and controlling, big one here is managing change across the project. We call that integrated change control, okay? Monitor and control project work is the process where we report. Control scope is where we prevent scope creep, people adding extras. Control schedule is where we keep the project on schedule. And like I said, don't just create a schedule, actually control the schedule. Control cost is keeping the project on budget. Control quality is inspecting and checking deliverables. Control resources is ensuring resource usage is as planned. Monitor communications is ensuring the plan is followed. Monitor risks is keeping risks in check. Control procurements is ensuring contract terms are met. And monitor stakeholder engagement is ensuring stakeholders are engaged. Again, however you can weave in stories from your real world, from company incidents, that will be great. And moving into the last one, we got close project or phase. This is where you're closing out a phase in the project or the project as a whole. You are compiling lessons learned, you're preparing reports, and you're releasing resources. So there's a lot of stuff that happens in project management, but you saw how I went through that quite briefly. If this sounds like something you want to do for your firm, you need to partner with me. It's a four-pager. This gives you immediate recognition as someone who wants to make change, as someone who can effect change. So for those of you who are PMPs, you've just been employed, you're in a firm, you're like, how can I begin to make a difference? How can I begin to make my mark in this firm? How can I begin to help? Partner with me, all right? You can get this document, you can get hard copies, you can get soft copies, whatever you want, just let us know. Send an email to support at praiseon.com. Check the link below and you'll be able to find some additional information for those of you that want to order this for your firms, begin to make a change. Begin to give them that summary, that high level view. Look, this is a great book. But if you put this into people's hands, one of two things is going to happen. One, you might either get hit with it, <laughs> or two, it might collect dust for many years. But jokes apart, no one's going to read that big old book straight off the bat. They're going to ask you, what's the summary? What's in it for me? Why should I start? Now, when you give them this intro to it, you're going to begin to pique their interest. People are beginning beginning to get interested in the cap and people are going to begin to get interested in the PMP and other things that the PMI have to offer, but you have to present it in a way that it goes down. Well, some people run away from the PMBOK guy. I mean, just take a look at it. it it's big. If, if someone gave you this versus this, I mean, this looks rather intimidating. You know, there's another book I have called, project management mid-level to C-level. That may actually be a great book for your senior management. You can find the um, audio book on iTunes. Things to think about to help your firm. I've got many, many tools, many, many books that can help people in your firm, curriculum, um, services that I offer. So you, you might want to think of partnering with me. I would love to help your team. I look forward to hearing from you. I'm going to get off my soapbox now. Thanks very much. Bye for now.